All right, so have you ever wondered how it feels to lose $122,000? That's not a typo, $122,000. I wanna tell you all about it in this video. So a few months ago, my wife and I decided that we wanted to get back into real estate and we started looking for a primary residence. But because the market right now is so crazy, everything we looked at was so bad. I mean, we're talking about like homes that were built in like the 60s that were trying to, people trying to sell it for like 600, $700,000. It was absolutely insane. And then like, if you actually go to Zillow and you click on the sold, recently sold tab, and you go back like a year, that was even more depressing for us because we saw homes that would have been perfect for us, like more than perfect. But those homes were long gone, and here comes the market of these crappy homes for extremely expensive. So we didn't find any. We could not find a home that was you know, within our budget, uh, that we had enough income to even qualify for, that was in a decent neighborhood. I mean, we couldn't even find something that was close to what we wanted. And even the homes like that we went to that was open houses and stuff, it was cram packed with people. Like you couldn't even find places to park. So we're like, okay, we probably need to calm down. And then the more we did research, we came across the opportunity for a new construction. And these are homes, you know, that haven't been built yet and they're brand new. For some reason, these new constructions were like fairly comparable in prices to some of the homes that were 40, 50, 60 years old. So we, what we ended up doing is going to check out some of the new constructions. One of the communities we really liked, uh, it's actually down the street from us, was affordable, right? Like we could actually buy it. We find a house that's cheap enough where we can afford it. And then we call and ask like, hey, what are the, the lot prices? And they weren't that bad. So we're like, okay, this is actually something we could do. It would stretch our budget a little bit, but for a brand new home, you know, no one's ever lived in it. There's a one year builder's warranty on pretty much everything. It's like, and you compare that to some of the homes that we would have to spend a crazy amount of money just to get it to a point where it's decent. We would go with the uh, new construction all day. So after we looked at the property online, we decided that we would take this a step further. We booked, you know, a showing. We wanted to go look at some of the ones that they pre-built so you can look at. And we decided to sign up on this process. This six month journey taught us so much and we made so many mistakes that I'm hoping you're watching this video and you don't go through the same stress, frustration, and it doesn't cost you anything. So by the grace of God, learn from my mistakes. Let's get into the entire thing. What's up guys, my name is Jay. If this is the first one of my videos that you're watching, I am a FINRA certified educator, a avid investor, and I just love talking and learning about money and about scripture. If you learn anything in this video, consider helping me grow. I'm not sure why Instagram likes me so much more than YouTube, but consider subscribing. I'm trying to grow this channel and help other people just like me and just like you. So the first red flag that we saw was obviously the lot. And the lot is crazy because they don't feature that anywhere. You know, you go, you see the signs all the time on the road. It's like new community prices starting at, you know, $500,000. That's not the case. They're not accounting for the lot. That's just the price of the, you know, construction, just the home. So in my newbie mode of never building a home before, that is not something that I knew. I purchased homes before, but I never built one. And I mean, you're thinking about like, you're going there, you look at the property, it's beautiful. And then you're like, oh, there's a 20% price tag on this, you know, 10 to 20, 25% price tag where you guys don't even mention it. It's kind of messed up, but just keep this in mind if you're looking for new construction. I hope this doesn't, you know, dissuade you from it, but it's something that you need to account for in your budgeting. The house we selected was actually like, it's an accelerated build model. So you don't have the opportunity to go in and pick the countertops or uh, how you want each specific handle in, in you know, the, the cabinets. You don't get any of that. They essentially pick 95, 97% of everything for you. And what that does is it actually allows them to, instead of taking a year to build the house, it takes them like six months. And because of the supply, you know, strain that COVID has put on pretty much everything, it, it seemed like a much better option. Not to mention it, the design features is where they really get you on the price. So we figured we'll save some money 
And at the same time, we're gonna get our home faster and we'll be able to ride the wave uh, up of the real estate market value. So after a ton of prayer and consideration and conversations back and forth with my wife, we decided that this is something we would wanna do. So we ended up wiring Pulte Mortgage $122,000. We signed obviously some of the paperwork and one of the best parts about this process is I remember very specifically, I was driving home, not sure from what, but I got a call from this lady at Pulte and she was amazing. I'm talking about an extremely kind and, and seemed very caring and loving person. And she just like made us feel so comfortable about the decision we were making. She kind of walked us through like, here's what's gonna happen next. And you know, insisted that we sign all the paperwork and be very communicative and insisted that like, if you have any questions, bring them up. So this was like, so far experience was amazing. All right guys, so I really want you to pay attention here because other than the last thing I'm gonna mention in this video, this is probably the most important thing that you can take away from it, okay? Your money down earnest deposit is not fully refundable if something happens. So if you do 5% down, 30% down, you could lose that money. I did not have someone to say that in a video to me prior to me going down this route. So this is something I learned after they had my money in hand. And that's when really this entire thing became interesting and emotional. And buying a new home or any home is inherently an emotional process. When you go down this route, you get to see them building your house and laying the foundation, putting up the walls, the framing, the sheetrock, and the entire process is extremely emotional. You know, we showed it to, to our family. We took pictures, videos, we took Stella there. Uh, not to mention you have like somebody like me, who uh, most of you know, I'm from Brazil and I'm an immigrant or was an immigrant here in, in the US. Never in my wildest dreams would I imagine being able to purchase a home like this and being able to build it and having something that's like brand new, unique. So you really are living the grace, the promises, and the providence of God in just an extreme way that you just never imagined. So from the moment we spoke with the salesperson, everything was set for the loan rate to be right around 4%. And 30 days before we actually closed, you know, the house is like almost ready to go at this point. We still had no idea on what the financing was going to look like. I actually reached out to other lenders to see if we could work with them just in case there was something going on and i never heard back from anyone like almost every month i was sending them an email like when can we talk numbers i want to find out like what is my cash to close what's my rate going to be what do you guys need from me and it was just you know crickets so 30 days before we close i get an email that's like hey we really need to lock in your rate like right now the rates are you know six percent and we should really get you locked in and i was like extremely puzzled what are you talking about? 6%. Not to mention the email was extremely vague and there wasn't like clear direction in it, right? This happened on like a Thursday or a Friday or something. And then I got another email that was super similar to that on Tuesday. And it was very, very similar. And I was just like, okay, I don't understand what's going on here. She's like, we need to get your rate locked ASAP. And I'm like, well, get the rate lock. She's like, well, we need you to approve a credit run. And I'm like, get a credit run, like do it. You, I don't understand what you're waiting on. Um, and by the time we went from when I we looked at the house all the way until they actually ran our credit, you know, three weeks before closing, they were offering me a rate that was completely absurd. And this is like where everything kind of goes downhill. So I didn't want a rate this high and it was essentially going to force a denial where we lose our all of the of the money or it was going to put us in a bad situation where we would have essentially be in this mortgage that we shouldn't be in either way it was like a harmful situation for our family and in my, my finances so by this point i smartened up i understood that there was like something shady going on and i needed to treat the situation differently i pretty much started making sure that anything we did was recorded as in like written email, text message, or if I was gonna get with someone on the phone, I would actually turn on this camera and make sure it was recording. 
because I wanted to have a record of everything that was going on because there was just so much shading stuff happening. So the first shady thing that they did was move our you know closing day. When I went to go meet with everybody, me, my wife, Stella was there and our realtor was there. They told us that it would actually be done, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of April. And then when I actually went to go walk the property with just the building manager, she told me like, no, we never said that. That's impossible. The earliest we can get you in the house is in June. And I'm like, no, no, no. You said April. And she's like, no, we would never say that. And I left that meeting extremely puzzled, me and my wife, because it tied in perfectly with when our lease ends here. So now we were kind of like, we were gonna have to scramble to either try to find a place or try to renew the lease here, which we were already out of our uh, you know, termination agreement where we had to renew. So I called my agent because he was in the meeting with us and I'm like, yo, did what date did you, they say that the house was gonna be ready? And he's like, you know, agreeing with us. He's like, no, it was April. And I was like, okay, so I'm not crazy, but I let it go anyways. The second thing, even in one of their documents that I found that it was about the mortgage insurance, it said that the estimated date of delivery was May 6th. So instead of the last week of uh, April, they put in, they gave themselves a week, but it was still like early May, not late June. And I literally, I found the document. So I brought this up to them and they're like, well, that was just a mistake, but I let it go. So the second thing that they did is they completely did not notify us of our notice of approval, which is essentially like you're pre-approved, let's get started with the financing, let's lock in your rate, let's start talking numbers and, and all of that. We did the deposit in January, this should have happened in March, and now we're like 30, 40 days before the house actually gets built, finished and nothing. So I really get into it with the lovely lady who at this point completely evolved, devolved, sorry, and She's like, well, I've been telling you about it like consistently. And I'm like, no, you haven't. And I, this is the, the mention here if you guys want to read it, but I don't want to go into it. But essentially she sent me one email and she's saying, I've been trying to tell you about it. And I'm like, no, you haven't. I've been trying to reach out since February and March to figure out what is going on. One of the things I did is I dropped the word. If you read in the email, I dropped the word predatory lending because I, I was reading a ton of reviews online from Pulte and I'm finding out that a ton of people never got any of their money back. So they put in this crazy deposit. The house was, you know, almost finished. Something went wrong and they lost their money. So I started going all out on this. I was not about to just let, you know, a huge corporation, Pulte Mortgage and Finances take this much money from us. I just, I was not willing to just let it go. So the first thing I did was I tried to go through all of the documents and find somebody's phone number, as in like a boss. I couldn't find anything. So I went to the internet and I just started looking up who is the manager for this area and this area. And I actually found a ton of them on LinkedIn. So I connected with all of them. One of them I actually found was the regional here for our region in Florida. Uh, I called her, her phone number was there, called her. She picked up surprisingly. I told her my entire story. And at the end she was like, you know, I'm so sorry, Jay, that this is happening. Let's, uh, let's get to the bottom of it. Give me a couple of days. Here's my email address. And it was like kind of a silver lining but not. And in the middle of all this, you know, me and my wife are praying and fasting and like, Lord, give us wisdom. Like, is this supposed to happen? Did we make a mistake? And, and like, we need to own up to it. Did they make a mistake? Like what is going on? So I'm just seeking direction from the Lord. One of the things I decided to do is call that lovely lady that gave me that phenomenal first call and, and just talk to her. I was like, look, I'm just going to appeal to her and see if there's something that we can do. And I remember very specifically that when I started questioning her about the whole situation and we had like a pretty lively argument, she, one of the things I told her, I was like, why didn't you just tell me that I didn't need the notice of approval? Because in your paperwork, it does says that like you get the notice of approval and that is the order of things. Why didn't you tell me that when we were on the phone back in January that I could have locked in my rate? And her response to me was literally this, and I, I kid you not, it was, you didn't ask. So she pretty much saying like, you didn't ask me the question, so I didn't answer it. But I didn't know that I was even supposed to ask that, right? It was like, how am I supposed to know which questions I'm supposed to ask if I just don't know which questions I'm supposed to ask? That's really when I found out that like, okay, there's really something going on here. This is strange, this is not normal. That is not how someone should be treated, especially not when it's like such a massive corporation. 
right? So I started doing my own research and homework. So the regional manager finally gets back to me and she says, look, we're gonna crunch all the numbers, but if for some reason we can approve this loan, then we are not obligated to give you the $122,000 back. We, we can actually keep that money. And in most cases, that's what happens is we keep that money. And I was like devastated. I'm like, are, are you kidding me right now? Like it's $122,000, right? Come on. So not only am I like just freaking out, I go to the Lord and I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm just seeking wisdom from the Lord as to like, Lord, what in the world are we gonna do? So I went to the internet and I'm like doing a deep dive going to, you know, past the 10th page of Google and Bing. And I'm trying to find something that would give me some leverage to get either get out of this thing or just, just something. Didn't find anything. So I started going through my own documents, right? All the docu stuff, DocuSign stuff and everything that I signed, all of the emails and the communication back and forth. And then I realized something. When we started talking about the rate, which was, you know, roughly a month before the house was gonna close, so early June, is when I gave them all of my paperwork. So pay stubs, W-2, all of my taxes, you know, bank account statements, all of that. That's when I gave it to them. But when I brought up initially the, the, the question of, hey, where's this rate coming from? This is not the rate that I was promised. She sent me a doc that I signed and in that document, this like disclosure, it had how much I made. So I reached out and I asked her, can you just confirm with me, when was it that I sent you my documents? Like all of my financial documents. So she sends me the date and it's exactly when I actually did send it to them. So then I asked her, well, then how did you get this number? And she said, well, that's something you signed back in March, but I didn't have record of me signing, but I do have a record of me signing like everything else. So I asked her, um, can you send me like the executed DocuSign link? Cause you know, after you, you sign and countersign, DocuSign sends a link to uh, both parties saying, hey, here's the completed document, which I didn't have. She, I was like, can you send that to me? And she's like, no, we don't have that. And I was like, okay, can you show me or send me the initial request for me to sign it? And they're like, no, we don't have that either. And I'm like, okay, so you have every document, but the one document that you kind of show this fake rate or at least a higher rate. And I don't recall signing it because of the, the numbers were already so high that it would have caught my attention. It was like a one page document. There's like impossible to miss. So I was like, so you don't have that. And then when I actually looked at the number even more, they had my income number completely wrong. What they did is like, they took my bank statement, found a month where like I made a lot more than I do any of my other months and it was like commission based. So they essentially set that as my salary. And they're like, okay, he makes, they, they put that I made that amount every single month, which is obviously not the case. So like, essentially they exaggerated my income so that they didn't, they could increase my rate and the loan would still be approved based on my DTI. So I was like, okay, we're about to like, this entire thing's about to come, come crumbling down right now because I found the source of the issue is they lied on these documents. So the first thing that came to me, to my mind was like, no, there is no way that this is happening. Something's off, I'm crazy. And I went to the Lord and I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord and I'm, I'm Lord, you know, don't let these people steal $122,000 from me. If that's what's happening. If not, and like, if this is like a mistake I'm supposed to make, then, and this is your will and your decision, by all means. But if they're treating me unfairly, I know, Lord, you're not gonna let it happen. So I got my Bible and I was praying and fasting. So I was like, Lord, would you speak to me in your word? So I got this specific passage, which was Psalm 119, verse 78. And it says, may the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause but I will meditate on your precepts. So I literally took the sword and I was like, got it. There is, these people are trying to handle my situation wrongly. There's something going on here and I'm not gonna stand for it. And 
that's literally what it says and what I understood from the passage. So with that brand new information, here's what happened. So after I got all my facts straight, all the docs lined up, I get the regional back on the phone. And I'm like, look, something's going on here. I don't fully understand what it is, but I've been praying and fasting over the situation. And I know that there is something dishonest happening here. It's literally what I told her. She probably thought I was a freak. Probably still thinks I'm a freak. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> and at this point I was like, look, I spoke with an attorney and I'm actually gonna have a follow-up meeting in their offices in a couple of days. And I, what I know is like, you guys are either gonna give me my $122,000 back or I'm gonna lose it. The third option is it may take a couple of years, but you guys are gonna pay me a lot more than $122,000, but I'm not letting this go. And I, I specifically told her, God is a God of justice and he will see to it that there is justice in this situation. So less than an hour after that, the finance manager calls me and says, look, Jay, we're actually gonna step in. We are going to buy down the rate for you to what it would have been back in you know March, not the January number, but the March number. And I would have been okay with that, to be honest. But because of the Bible verse and the way I felt through the whole situation, I'm like, no, no, I don't actually want that anymore. What I actually want is for you guys to terminate this entire agreement and give me my money back because I don't trust you anymore. By the grace of God, they agreed. We signed a termination and within a couple of days, you know, the money was back in my bank account and I learned so much. It was literally like $125,000 lesson from, from A to Z on several things. The first one is don't be foolish in thinking that these companies, corporates, and these people care about your money and your finances and how hard you've worked to acquire anything because they do not. Also, I was fooled be, by, even by myself, right? By being emotionally attached to the property, you kind of let a few things go, I feel like, and you're not paying as much attention as you should be. So that's, that's two things there. The third, and this is something that is like key for this video or for anything else that you do in life. If you are a Christian, then you need to Speak to the Lord, speak to the Lord, go in prayer fast and ask God for guidance in this sermon. I can tell you right now that if it was not for the grace, the mercy and the hand of God throughout this entire thing, I would probably not be shooting this video or it I would be in a much different situation. But by the grace of God, all of it worked out and his name was glorified through all of this. Not to mention what a testimony for you that's listening right now and my faith was edified, your faith is hopefully edified, and you know, include God in your business dealings, in your investments, in your entrepreneurship, your job, include the Lord. Because, and here's what happened, my wife and I actually found a home. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, because I have a new video coming out on that one, on what we were able to purchase, what we found, and that story in of itself is an entirely new miracle. And I can't wait to share with you. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you on the next one.